One of our personal favorite ancient sites is the ancient fortress of Sacsayhuaman. We believe this site was built an unimaginably long time ago, yet it would still be a daunting proposition for any invading party. One of the most impressive features of the site, and the reason why it is ranked as one of our favorites, is the inexplicably baffling stonework that makes up the fortress's maze of outer walls. Created without the use of mortar and encompassing some of the most astonishing ancient stonework we feel to be found anywhere on Earth. Although many other sites within Peru undoubtedly contain incredibly precise stonework, Sacsayhuaman is the jewel in the crown when it comes to the evidence for a lost advanced civilization. The largest stones in this boundary being 28 feet high. Regularly academically estimated to weigh over 120 tons, with more enthusiastic estimates placing the largest stones at around the 300 to 400 ton mark. Located on the outskirts of the ancient Inca capital of Cusco, it rests on an enormous artificially leveled plateau. It consists of three outer barriers, gargantuan walls, 1,500 feet long and 54 feet wide created in a strategic zigzag shape. They surround a paved area containing a mysterious circular structure. As recently mentioned in another video, there is overwhelming evidence to suggest two phases of building was undertaken at certain sites within Peru. We feel that the constructors of Sacsayhuaman are the same people who indeed built most of ancient Peru. This group were the ones who utilized the enigmatic protuberances even found upon the casing stones on the Great Pyramids. However, interestingly, there was another, later phase, and although not as complex, still far more advanced than any academically studied ancestor who are currently claimed as the actual builders. This means that more than one ancient civilization must have called ancient Peru home. A later group re-inhabiting these sites, flourishing to a point where they were clearly inspired by the site's original builders, becoming highly capable stone builders themselves. How old is Sacsayhuaman? Who could have possibly built it? And why did they not utilize the mysterious protuberances found on much of their other stonework throughout Peru? It is, undoubtedly, one of the most incredible ancient sites still standing on our planet. And thanks to the incredible capabilities of its builders, it will remain standing for many more years to come. It is a site filled with inexplicable features, which we find incredibly compelling. Osaka Castle is one of the most intriguing of all of Japan's forgotten wonders, a place we have covered in the past it was, we believe, like so many other inexplicable sites around the world, re-inhabited by our most recent of ancestors, placed within an academically permitted timeline of events. A chronology that, if one wishes to succeed in the mainstream, must toe the line of. For if one goes against the grain and explores the site with a critical mind, one can clearly see it contains a number of surviving features which not only displays lost knowledge, thus the work of a lost civilization, which at some point in the very distant past built ruins all around the globe. Building countless polygonal ruins which have, due to their incredible construction technique, fortunately survived into the modern era. However, it is not just its polygonal foundations which show clear evidence of these elusive and consistently denied lost ancestors. Octopus Rock, for example, also sometimes known as the Drum Stone, is the largest megalithic stone found within the walls within the castle's grounds. This giant stone, just like those of Baalbek, is enormous. Estimates for its weight range from 100 to 300 tons, although it could, of course, be far heavier. However, even at these conservative estimates, any explanation of how ancient man accomplished such feats remains elusive. For the fact remains, the stone is of an incredible size, and to this day its placement, along with many others found throughout the world, remains unexplained and unknown. So for one to conclude that this stone's use, its quarrying, transporting, and placement within this wall, 
was done by our less capable, more primitive post-Ice Age ancestors, yet all these methods of building and lifting, the knowledge of how to do such tasks, somehow simply vanished through the ages. All of which now remaining a mystery even with computer technology. An explanation still evades us, thus to conclude this to be anything else than that of a relic, left by a far older, now lost civilization's work, we believe would be highly illogical, and should appear illogical to anyone with a capacity to dissect the purposes for these actions, taken by an academia claiming to hold all the answers. All the while, actively concealing or ignoring any conflicting controversial evidence, truths that due to their belief in their power, laying within their reluctance to ever admit an incorrect hypothesis for the origins of species or the timeline of man, thus this doubling down on fallacy merely makes their persistence at sticking to said posits not only a damaging conspiracy, which robs us all of our heritage, but can also be perceived as an attempt to conceal anything which could alter the status quo. The octopus rock is an incredible feat of ancient engineering, and one, just like that of the polygonal masonry techniques that can be found at countless other sites the world over, is clearly a relic of a forgotten past, accomplished with the use of forgotten technology and knowledge. Just how big is octopus rock? How old is it for that matter? And how did our ancient ancestors accomplish these feats? As our research deepens and our studies widen, our target, that of a currently hidden lost civilization, becomes clearer in the mind every day, and it is only a matter of time before they are fully rediscovered. To deny such facts will eventually become too ludicrous. It is a journey of discovery which is, undoubtedly, highly compelling. Within the country of Ethiopia, some seriously old megalithic ruins can be found, many of unknown age. For example Tia, located in the Sodo region of Ethiopia. An archaeological marvel, which is a UNESCO World Heritage Site, remarkable for its large stone pillars. But imagine the surprise of initial explorers when they stumbled across an entire church, in the shape of a Templar cross, completely carved out of the ground made of a type of volcanic tuff, I'm sure its initial rediscovery would have come with considerable archaeological interest. Who could have carved such a structure, straight out of the rock, or indeed why? It is known as the Church of St. George, and is largely thought to have been constructed around 1200 AD, yet, alas, no one really knows. The Church of St. George is one of 11 monolithic churches in Lalibela, a city in the Amhara region of Ethiopia. Originally named War War, the historical and religious area was named Larabella after the King Jebemiskel Larabella of the Zagat dynasty, who supposedly commissioned its construction. Although like the pharaohs of Egypt, he may have just laid claim to the impressive ancient structures which resided in the region long before himself. He may have also been attributed with the act due to him being regarded as a saint by the Ethiopian Orthodox Tuahito Church. No one can really explain how he could have built it, and many religious followers believe he received instruction from God. With many ancient sites upon earth, if researched heavily enough, reveal evidence that they predate their modern held suspected builders. For instance the amazingly designed ancient site of Puma Punku, which contains stones created in weight-bearing shapes, with no more to ever being used, yet the structures were earthquake-proof. These structures were said even by the Incas to have been there before them, they believed they were constructed by the gods themselves. The only conclusions that can be made from such structures including the Church of St. George is that the builders were highly sophisticated. Enlightening artifacts may vanish, but thankfully, the ancients built structures to last. And a Templar church carved into the stone ground, in the middle of Ethiopia, of unknown origin, is a very curious structure indeed, 